Okay, so um, this is a lot like that y equals mx plus b thing, all right, in that we have a general equation which is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And we are going to take some information that we know and plug it into the equation to figure out the thing that we don't know. Um, and the thing that we don't know in this equation, just like you don't know the y-intercept when you do the y equals mx plus b, is what? What uh, variable are we trying to find in here, Becca? We're trying to find A because we know what H is, we know what K is, and X and Y are going to be left in the general form of the equation anyway. So all we're trying to do is find A, okay? So in this equation, aside from the A, there are one, two, three, four letters, variables. On our graph, we have, wait for it, one, two, three, four numbers. Is that a quinky dink? Definitely not. So we're going to take those numbers, plug them in for the variables, and then solve for the one variable that's left, and then we'll be good to go. Okay? Right. This is the vertex form of the parabola. So what number am I going to put in for y? Four. Okay. Definitely incorrect. For two different reasons, okay? One is that uh, four is an x coordinate, not a y coordinate. And the other thing is we're not going to use these points for x and y because these, even though they are an x and a y, they're more right. special than that. Uh, this is the left. The right. Right. All right? So yes, I want to put in 5 for y. Nice try, Tucker. Uh, and then I'm going to put 7 in for x minus the x coordinate of the vertex, which is 4 squared plus two, okay? So, yeah, Courtney's participating, it's a scary day. Um, so nothing too crazy there, right? It's not rock science. And now we just need to solve that for uh, A. What do you do first? Subtract the two. Okay, we can subtract the two if you want. If you feel good about that, subtract two from both sides. That's not how I would do it, but that's okay. It'll work out. Yeah, usually you do parentheses first. Would it really matter? Nope, it's not going to matter. Okay, so inside the parentheses, 7 minus 4 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So this is 3 equals 9a. Then my last step is divide both sides by 9. So A equals 3 ninths, which reduces to 1 third. Okay? So, nice job. Well, it was thirds. You're good at your thirds. Because that's what you said before. Um, so now we know what A is, then we know what H is, and we know what K is. So what is our uh, equation for the parabola? One thing. It's right there. Minus what? 4 squared plus 2. Okay, good. So, Courtney, the x and the y are always going to be the final answer. Okay, and the 4 and the 2 are the h and the k. It'll be the first thing I taught you in like 3 or 4 years. Okay, okay. Actually, possibly. Hey, hey, hey. Alright, so there is our uh, answer right there. Can you hold that up? The one third just goes. Yep, yeah, the one third just goes in front of the uh, quadratic equations that is uh, super handy is anytime you throw an object in the air, the path is parabolic. And so there are a couple of equations that you can use for that. stands for position. Okay. Uh, we'll get there in a second. V sub zero. G stands for gravity. Uh huh. Yep. T of course is time. 
<laughs> this uh, V sub zero, the reason why there's a little subscript zero is because that is your initial velocity, your starting velocity. So then it's not a teardrop? Or a it is not a teardrop. teardrop, no. It has not uh, killed someone and gone to prison. Okay. <laughs> uh, and S sub zero is your <laughs> starting what? Position, yeah, initial position. Okay, and for those of you that have not had physics, what is the acceleration due to uh, gravity? Okay, if you're in meters per second, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. These are two different equations, yeah. I put the y on velocity. Wait, that negative No, not good. It's going to let me. Yeah, that's why I'm not going to do it. Um, negative 9.8 meters per second squared because gravity is pulling things down. That's why it's uh, considered to be negative because down is negative. Anybody know what it is in feet per second squared? Oh, yeah, right. Science teachers don't like that. Okay, well, this is not a science class, so we can use... Uh, uh, it's not quite that simple. It's negative 32 feet per second squared. I don't know how long it is. A meter, like, how much is a There are... What is it? Two point... Two point something. Yeah, it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not a very clean uh, conversion. Okay, so this is how you can find the position of an object at any time t if you know gravity, which we do, it's the same everywhere, if you know the starting velocity and you know its starting position, okay? So if you're standing on the football field and you throw a ball up in the air and you know the velocity and you know that you're six feet tall, you can figure out how high above the ground that ball will be at any time t using this formula right here, yes? The 9.8 is the 32, is that, is the 9.8 gravity, and is the 30, negative 32, is that, what is that? Those are both gravity. One is in meters per second squared of oh. the feet. Uh, what? Yeah. Apparently. Um, okay, and then this thing right here, yeah. this, tells you the velocity of the object at any time t if you know gravity and you know its initial velocity, okay? Uh, Forrest, you'll... As a promotion for the new Houston Astros <coughs> downtown ballpark. A competition is held to see who can throw a baseball the farthest up in the air from the front row of the upper deck seats. 83 feet above field level. So if you are starting 83 feet above field level, what did they just tell you? The what of the right? And so that is our initial position. Question is 83 feet. Would you have to add the person's height as well? Uh, yeah, technically. Yeah. Oh, we're going to kind of. Do need those numbers in there written down? No, I just wrote them down. Just uh, kills. No, uh, um, what? Uh, the winner throws the ball with an initial vertical velocity of 92 feet per second. Okay, so what did they just tell me now? V sub zero is 92 feet per second. And then it lands in the uh, grass. So first thing we're going to do is find the maximum height of the ball. Um, so which one of the two equations that I just gave you would you like to use for that? S though. Yeah, because we're looking for the position, so we're going to use the position equation. All right? So... Okay, well, hold on. What's S? The S? Key? That's position. And then the V? The v is velocity. And I don't know why they use S for position. Position or something? Is P taken for something else? You can't use P. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a weird, I mean, this book does it, the calculus book does it, but when the last calculus book did it, I don't know. Okay, so one half gt squared, so which of these numbers am I going to use? Am I going to use the 9.8 meters per second squared or the 32 feet per second squared? The feet, because they're giving us the stuff in uh, feet. So half of 32 is? 
and 16. So this will be uh, negative 16 t squared. Because it says one half g t squared. Okay. Uh, then we're going to go plus the initial velocity, which is 92 feet per second. So plus 92 t. And then the last part is plus our starting position. Okay. What? 83. 83. Okay. So there's my equation that tells me the position of the ball at any time t. How do I figure out the maximum height? The uh, thing we just did. It is just like the thing we just did, which is why we're doing it. Because it connects to what we just did. You can put that so in the you the All right, so you find the vertex of this, and that will tell us, because we're throwing a ball up in the air, if we find the vertex, that is the high point of the path, right? Oh, it's negative because of the. Right, and the oh, negative is because the problem is yeah, okay, good. All right, I can sleep easier tonight. Um, so H is negative ninety two over negative ninety two over negative thirty two, which is what? Right, if we reduce that a little bit, forty six. Two point eight seven five. 2.875? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, that's fine. We can just stay in this little here. Okay, so is that my answer? That the uh, no, maximum height is 2.875? What did we just find? We found one point on the vertex. And what does that point represent? It's not the height, but in this case, it's not an X, it's a Y. It's a Y, so it'd be the height. Somebody save me. Just um, how far away it is. Yes. What is the x in this Distance. equation? No. Um, time. Thank you. It's the time. Okay. Instead of this being x squared and x, it's t squared and t. So the x coordinate of my vertex is the time that it takes the ball to reach its maximum height. Okay. So to find out what that maximum height is, now I'm going to just plug this into this equation. Okay. Or you. Can that other formula C minus A H squared. Right? I think it would be easier to plug it in because I would use my calculator to do it and I'm going to just use the book to do it and get 215.25. Okay, where did the K come That is the Y coordinate of the vertex point right here. Okay, so what we just figured out is that 2.875 seconds after the person threw the baseball, it reached a maximum height of 215.25 feet. Well, they started at 82 feet. Where the what? Half of the gravity. Half of 32 is 16. What is it equal? 32 is gravity in uh, feet per second squared. So you do need that number. Well, Bobby needs this. Bobby, you got it? That's if they're giving you the distances in meters. But this time they're giving us distances in feet. All right, we're not done. Okay, next one is going to be uh, easier. Wait, then we need a new piece of paper. Or I mean, different problem. What's that? I guess this is a new problem. No, same problem still. Next question. Okay, next question. Same problem. How long is the ball in the air? Okay, you might think that no, since it took 2.875 seconds to go up, it would take that long to go down. Right. They started 83 feet off the ground. Okay? And so it's going to take it longer to go all the way to the bottom. What about the gain of velocity? 
Well, I'm going to leave that to Mr. Weaver, but there, that's kind of covered in this whole, let's not get into a whole 20-minute physics discussion. You're just going to have to trust me. Okay, okay, I, was just, I was just asking. Okay, you. yes. Uh, can you solve, uh, like, take the ST Right. Solve for t when this equals what? What would I have to plug in for the position if I want to know when the ball hits the ground? Zero. Zero. Because the ground is zero. So you're absolutely right. So I'm going to take this equation and set it equal to zero. So negative 16 t squared uh, plus 90, is it 93? 92t plus 83 and set that equal to zero. Okay? Girls. How do I solve that? I think we have three or four different ways to solve it that you learn. Well, subtracting 83. Okay, definitely not subtracting 83. I know that's for your initial instinct. But when you're dealing with the quadratic, you can't do that. Okay, we could use the quadratic formula. That's one. Is that in your calculator from last year? Okay. So you could use the quadratic formula with a equaling negative 16, b equals 92, and c equals 80. Um, okay, what'd you get? You should sing it. Negative 0.79 a plus 84. Okay, so A is negative 16, B is 92, and C is 84. Okay. Um, well, it's obviously not the negative one. Right, hold on, I need the class together. Almost done. Taylor did it with the quadratic formula. He got two different answers. One's negative, one's positive. Which one do we want? Positive. The positive one because we are not going back in time. So the ball was in the air for about six and a half seconds, a little bit more than six and a half seconds. Okay. So quadratic formula is one of them. Tucker doesn't have the quadratic formula. Like this. What's another way you could do it? Okay, you could do it on by hand, but there's a different way to solve a quadratic equation. Without, right. We could graph it, and if you're graphing it, what are you looking for? Where it crosses the x-axis, yeah. So, Tucker? What? This is your life right now. Don't look at it. You can't look at it. Uh, what is it? Negative 16x squared plus 92x plus 83. Okay, so if you graph that, you can kind of see the flight of the ball. We're missing the peak, but we don't care. <laughs> These places where it crosses the x-axis are the two solutions. Obviously, we're looking for this one and not that one. So the way that your calculator tells you that one is you go second, calc, which one? Answer. Uh, four. Five. 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 Zero. zero. Those are called the zeros of the function. So if I want to find this one, I'm going to name a number to the left of where it crosses. So I'm going to four. Seven. Seven. And our guess is? Two. Six. So we in between those. Okay, six. six point, uh, uh, and it gives us the answer that we got from the quadratic formula. Okay? Question mark? Yeah. Why do you have to do like the left bound and the right bound? Because the calculator needs a place to start. And so all the calculator does is a really, really, really fast guess and check. It takes the first number that you gave it, plugs it in, and finds out if that's too big. Or, you know, it just bounces in between those until it gets the right answer. Yeah, like, it just does it really quick. So it just needs a place to start. Yep, we're getting an assignment. Can you give a short one? Can you go back to that one? Yeah, let me uh, get this down while we're around. Like two and a half hours, I'll probably get to figure out the direction.